Hello everybody, I'm Storm here, and welcome back to Factorio. In the last episode, we finished up the production chain to get up to Module 8 for the production method that I'm using here, which really isn't that unique, it's just um, using it for this. I've used similar stuff before with, um, like, like this and, and a few other things. Uh, to kind of create all of that. But, you know, it's a bit different from what I typically do. But, got it all done. Made the blueprints, all that sort of stuff. And, kind of finished up there. And I kind of cut things short a little bit because I said that I needed to do some more work to reorganize. Um, the, the way I was handling the resources. And so I have done that. And as you can see, this is where we used to have everything. And it's been all removed. And that I have taken all of our resources, everything that we're bringing in here, and routed them into the same direction. Bringing them all down here, creating kind of this interface here. And then, this is called the the bus method. So this creates a bus, essentially, that sends everything through here. And then you branch off of that to put your inputs in there. So that you can feed these multiple lines from the same, same inputs. And so, I've gone ahead and set this thing up. So we have Mark IV production coming out to here. We have our Mark VI production coming through here. We have our Mark 8 production here for speed modules. I've gone ahead and hooked them up to loading areas. And then I duplicated that again for, what are these? These are effectivity modules. Again, 4s, 6s, and 8s. And then I copied the whole thing again for productivity modules. For fours, sixes, and eights. Now I haven't connected everything into um, the loading base yet. That's probably something I'm going to do off screen a bit. I've set up all the loading bays. They're all ready. I just have to do all of the uh, the belt work to get them in there. The reason why I didn't finish all the belt work is because building all of these uh, production chains here completely de depleted the entire supply of belts that I had in the network. Belts and underground belts, and we still out of underground belts. I had to let the game run for four to five hours, I think it was. I just kind of went off and watched some TV um, for a while and just kind of let the game run to let all the belts manufacture and get distributed out to where they needed to be. And so... I just really haven't had the resources to put the belts in where they need to be yet. So, that's kind of where we're at. Now, I am noticing some slight issues here with our silicon wafers and our solder. I don't think that's flowing into the system as fast as it needs to. I could be wrong. The big issue are the silicon wafers. They're just not getting through um, in enough of a rate. And this is all backed up here. So even just feeding this process here 
to feed these three lines is using up too many silicon wafers. Uh, we'll have to see if this kind of fills up at all and backs up enough. I mean, it eventually will, once all of the modules actually fill up in the in here, but that's going to take a really long time. So I'm going to have to kind of evaluate how I'm handling that. I'm probably going to have to bring more over in some capacity. So... That's something I'm going to have to consider on my own. Alright, so... What are we doing today? Well, one thing I need to do, um, before I go much further that I noticed, is that... There's a problem in one of our old production areas, which is where we're making all of the logistics equipment. Inserters. Oh, I also ran completely out of inserters. And belts, and all that sort of stuff. And one of the reasons why is, you know, one, we are completely depleted on iron plate. Completely depleted on iron ore. Not a ton I can do. Nickel, I think this is nickel. Yeah, nickel also is having a bit of an issue. But primarily the nickel is being used for other things. I think steel. So that's a bit of an issue. But we all have, we have other sources of that. Um, also for making nitinol um, up here, which again I I used a different method. I created a requester chest to bring it in from the other areas. So nitinol's fine. The big issue here is that we're completely out of titanium plates in this process. We have plenty of titanium ore. Plenty of titanium ore in this whole system. Uh, one of the reasons why is that I have a requester chest that actually brings the titanium over ore over here using logistics bots from our primary ore purification system to supplement the small trickle we get from here. And this actually makes silver. It's not the only thing that makes silver. So. Its primary purpose is titanium. The issue that we're having here is it just, just isn't processing fast enough. But. I have ways of making that work. Oh, what happened there? There you go. I noticed this just before I started recording, which is why I'm doing it now. Let's just make sure that everybody has what they need. And what's the actual issue here? Oh, they're using a method that requires nickel ingot. That's what the problem is. Well, here's what we're going to do. Just use straight titanium ingots. Just use straight titanium ingots right now. Because the nickel's a problem. 
Oh, hold on. No, I don't want to do that. There we go. Since nickel is the issue, let's do what we can. All right, all right. So with that done, the next thing we need to do is this. This is what, 120 per minute? Which is what, two per second? Two per second? Mm hmm. Now, how much can I actually reduce how many we need? Can I get this down to one? Now this one might not go all the way down to one. Oh, it, it actually might. Oh, no. Nope, two. Well, I'll be. 1,150. So let me, let me just set this to a per second thing. Two per second. There we go. That reads out a little bit better for me to kind of ascertain exactly how much we need. Because I know the number's in a per second rate, but uh, not per minute. 30.4 per second. Okay. All right. So there we are. That's That's a lot better. And also, since we're not using that nickel... That'll eventually back all the way up into the nickel system, and um, that nickel will get redirected over to uh, wherever it is, one of these things, to this thing instead. So we'll make more nitinol, though nitinol's not an issue at the moment. Okay. Okay. Let's get back down here, hop back on the train, go back to the... to where we need to be. Just wanted to take care of that. Alright. Modules. It's kind of funny going back and looking at those old production systems because you look at those old belts and inserters and it feels like everything is moving in slow motion. Because so used to these ultimate inserters and belts. Okay, now what I definitely don't want to do here what I definitely don't want to do here is hook up to the, these lines I mean, this stuff is manufacturing, it's just... Slow. It's not as fast as it should be, because of the silicon. Alright, well... What are we going to need here? We're going to need a lot of the same inputs. We're going to need so solder. Silicon wafers, silicon nitride, gilded copper, sulfuric acid, uh, plastic, tinned copper, carbon, copper plate, gold plate, ferric chloride solution, glass fibers, and liquid resin. 
for all of this. All of which are things I have. I just need to set up independent supply areas for them. And figure a way up where I'm actually going to build it. So what I probably should do is set up another loading bay. And what we're going to do is we're going to make these uh, rocket control units. All right. And I don't think that this is going to be extended any further. So all of this area down here is available. All right. So I'm not going to use the same method. I'm going to use a similar method. We're going to need uh, one, two, three of those. We're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six of those for this. And what I might do is just blueprint the whole thing so that I can make it in multiple places if I want to or need to. All right, so let's just start setting things up. First and foremost, we are going to need to make these multi-layer circuit boards. So first thing we need to do is say this, and you are going to be making fiberglass, obviously. OK. And that you're going to have an input there. And let's see, this should be where this is. Yep, there. Okay. So that's an input for the liquid resin. That's an input for the fiberglass. And then this is going to two of these to make multi-layer circuit boards, two of these, which actually should be fairly easy, just like that. Oh, the problem is, is that they're going to need ferric chloride solution and inputs for copper and gold. Hmm. I think in this instance, a belt is probably warranted. Uh, how much are we going to need? Four per second. Okay, that's that's easy. Okay, that's easy. So I was like, could I bump this up to like five per second? What if I did five per second? Save. It'd be something that's more traditional in design. No, we're going to do two per second. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is... This. And I'm going to have... Um, these guys making these. Let's see. There'd be another... Input here. Fair chloride solution. Okay.
and then we need four inputs. No, three. Eight per second, eight per second. Alright, so you're you are the fiberglass, right? You're the fiberglass coming in. Okay. Which is fine. That's fiberglass. Or glass fibers coming in. Could I use direct inserters instead of a belt? I just might be able to. Let's see, if I were to do that... And you're going to drop there, and then you're going to pick up from there. That ought to work. And then you're going to pick up from there. And you're going to drop... There? I think that will work. Yes. That should definitely work. Alright, we're going to want to... I'm basically going to go ahead and put a module in there just because. And these are going to need full loads of modules. Okay. And then so, what we're going to have here... Is an input input for copper and gold. We want to do it there, or rather, what I could do is bring one of them in here. And then you can drop Wait, no, let's pick up. Pick up is gonna be here, drop is going to be there. Yes. Okay. And then Here, we could have a line coming in. Something like that. Pick up a drop. Uh, pick up a drop. Yep, there you go. So, we would have like... Uh, copper and gold coming in on those lines there. That would work. Okay, so now we're going to need lines for carbon, tinned copper wire, and silicon wafers and plastic bars. For electronics assembly machines. Now, where are these getting put, by the way? They're getting put into these. There's a question. Where's the output of those going? It's at a rate of four per second, so one side of a belt is fine. Pick up there, drop there. 
pick up there and drop there. Okay. And if we set that to go on a specific side of the belt, just to make sure that it gets on that outside edge of the belt, I can put something else on there. I can put something else on there, because that's not an actual input. That's a... Uh... There's an internal transmitter there. Okay. I could put these on there. The basic electronic components. We're going to need tin to copper wire. Okay. So let's do this. Let's put you there. You're going to be basic electronic components. And then you're going to be put onto that side of the belt. Yes. And then you're going to have an input here for carbon. Right? And then... You're going to have this input coming through here for tinned copper wire. It's going to go in there. Output goes there. Okay. Works. Okay. So, if this is tinned copper wire... Then we're going to want to have two of these. Nothing else needs a tinned copper wire, right? No. Okay, so you're picking up from, he from here. And you're picking up from there. Right? Tinned copper wire. You are making transistors. You are making integrated electronics. That's going to need an input of sulfuric acid from somewhere. Okay. Not a problem. And so we're going to have silicon wafers come in. Silicon wafers or plastic come in there. Um, actually, it would be best to have silicon wafers on... No, it's going to need both, isn't it? So you're going to be picking up from there, and you're going to be picking up from there as well. And you're going to be dropping there. Silicon wafers or plastic. Either one can come into either of those lines. And then outputs of these can go on to two sep can go into a single belt, right? Um, this is what twelve per second. That's eight per second. Easy. Easy. Yeah, we can run a belt like that. And then you would take that out, and you would take that out, and then you would put that on the near side. And then for this, we would have a 
a sulfuric acid input there. Okay. And now we're going to need one of these. We're just going to need silicon wafers. Okay, so it's going to be a one of these. And then we're going to need... Wait, hold on. Yeah, one of them is plastic, one of them is silicon wafers. And we're going to need two more lines. One with silicon nitrate and the other with gilded copper wire. Hmm. And then we're going to have to feed all of this stuff into these two assembly machines. Okay. I think we're at the end of the episode. I'll go ahead and sort this out. Maybe I'll actually run some of these lines down here. Probably are using this as, as kind of the, the bus for all these lines. Maybe not, because this stuff's in the way. I'll figure it out. And then hook everything in so that I get a good idea where it actually all is oh, going to be. And then we'll get figure out where we're going to put the CPUs and the rocket control unit assembly machines. Alright, so... For now, we'll go ahead and stop here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you next time.